Hey friends, it is Friday, it is time for hot news. We got a few things to talk about, a lot about video games, because the Game Awards happened last night. So that's gonna be a lot of what's going on today, but we also got some intriguing news about other things going on. But before we get into all of the hot news today, I wanna let you know that this video is actually brought to you by a desk. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. Well, hello there. You might notice me at my fancy new desk. But alas, it's not a desk. It's a gaming gear wooden platform. My friends, this thing has revolutionized the look of the office. It has RGB lighting built into it. It syncs with your PC lighting. As you can see, it's synchronizing quite well. It has everything that you could want. It has cable management routing holes. It has shelves for anything that you want to put here or doubles out of the footrest if you so desire. You can get your PC and your system looking sweet and gorgeous on the GGWP desk alpha, which is something that they just delivered to us. This is an amazing desk. I love it so much. This is a sponsored spot, but holy crap, this thing is made of high quality wood. It feels pristine. It looks gorgeous and it comes in a couple different configurations. If you want to wall mount your monitors, they actually have a panel that can be installed here to actually have a wall mount for your monitors on a vase mount. Or if you just want to go bare budget minimum, you can remove the panel like we did. We don't need it. We just have a whole bunch of stuff on the desk. You could also remove the RGB lighting, but why would you want to do that, my friends? You want to illuminate your room the best way possible. As you can see, it has LED lighting wrapping all the way around through clear acrylic, which looks gorgeous. And we happen to have GGWP number one. So if you're interested in picking yourself up a gaming gear wooden platform, I cannot recommend this thing enough. It is amazing. You can check it out at the link in the video description, ggwpdesks.com. Currently, they are only selling in South Africa. However, they are anticipating getting international shipping set up soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But holy crap, we love this desk. It's amazing. And now I need to remove myself from it and I'm going back to the to the set. Okay, so the ad spot's over. Now it's time to get into the hot news that we've got going on. So let's start off with a couple of things that happen at the Game Awards before we get into the title piece. So first off, congrats to God of War for winning Game of the Year. They absolutely deserved it. That was probably the best game that I've played this year, bar none. Like it was just above and beyond everything else I've played. And it, I just totally think that they deserved to win. Yes, I know it's a console game, but hot dang is it a really good console game. So you guys, if you haven't checked it out, I could, I could, it gets my double thumbs up, damage thumb seal of approval. But with the Game Awards, with everything being handed out to Dead Cells, Red Dead Redemption 2, more God of War, there was actually a lot more information that came out. A lot of game reveals as well as game things happening in the world. So I wanna give you a couple of highlights of everything that happened. Obviously this won't be a comprehensive list. If you want a comprehensive list, go check out a, a gaming YouTube channel. Cause that's, what well, not that, I'm just giving you the peak highlights, okay? So number one, the thing that I definitely didn't see coming was Joker from Persona 5 making it first entry into the Smash arena by being in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate as the first DLC character, which is pretty epic. Persona 5 is a great game if you have 100 hours to invest into it, because it is a long boy, but it's really good. Then we had EA teasing Dragon Age 4. We also had Hello Games, the people, the makers of No Man's Sky announced their new game, The Last Campfire. Obsidian announced their new game, The Outer Worlds. Far Cry 5 has a sequel called The New Dawn, which is now post-apocalyptic. I don't know that one. We got Crash Team Racing coming in in a hot and heavy remake. Psychonauts 2 was also announced. And then CSGO is now free to play for everybody and has a battle royale mode. Why? Why battle royale? I don't, I don't, stop. Stop with the battle royales. Yeah, I know it's money, Reese. I know it's money. Okay, they're making enough money off of skins. They don't need to actually charge people for the game in the first place. And then also Black Ops 4 is now half price at $30 if you want the game for only its multiplayer components and you want to drop zombies off the face of the map. It'll be $29.99 for you to get the multiplayer and blackout smushed together, just dropping off zombies. So instead of spaying, spaying, instead of paying 60, you now pay 30 bucks. So that's all the game news that I really cared about that happened at the Game Awards last night. There is also the one piece about Epic now has a game store similar to like the Steam launcher where they are going to be introducing a higher revenue share to game developers as high as 88% to anybody who lists their game on the store. Whereas with Steam, most people are getting like a 70-30 revenue share. With Epic, it's going to be 88-12. And it, I, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Epic officially launched that yesterday. So that is now live. You'll be seeing more games on the Epic launcher. But the consensus in the office is that the Epic's games launcher is the worst 
first one that they've ever used. I personally haven't had too many issues with it. How do you guys feel about the Epic Games launcher? Let us know down in the comments below. But with that being said, let's get into some graphics card news. So first up, we've got EVGA teasing their 2080 Ti Kingpin card, which in case you don't know, is usually the Mac daddy of overclocking cards. Usually heck of a lot of expensivity attached to it. That it's not even a sentence, but I'm sticking with it anyways. And so they're teasing it, should be coming soon, 2080 Ti being massively overclocked, coming soon to you. And then we also had InnoDisk announcing that they are releasing an M.2 graphics card. My friends, this is something that goes into your M.2 slot, super small form factor. Like this is gonna be amazing if more, like if Nvidia and AMD can adopt this at all for their low end tier graphics cards, this could be a cool thing. Right now, it's not that impressive, it's really only meant as like a 2D accelerator. It can power like a 4K display at around 30 hertz and a 1080p at 60 hertz, mostly meant for video playback. It doesn't have that much memory. It's not that powerful, but this is a pretty cool innovation that I think if we can get like Nvidia to drop like their next 30 level card on an M.2 like slot, that's gonna that's gonna be a game changer for small form factor PCs that you need, just need as in your home theater. I'm excited for this, so that's pretty cool. And then we've got the bit of news that is in the title. The thing that ticks me off probably more than anything else, probably should, is unreasonably healthy for me to be bothered by this, but it's Nvidia releasing yet another 10 series graphics cards. I can't even keep track of how many they've released up until this point. It has to be in the dozens. So there's a new 1070 on the block. It is going to be rocking GDDR5X memory, but it's gonna be weak GDDR5X memory that's only at eight gigabits per second instead of the capable 10 gigabits per second, just like they did with the 1060. And in case you guys aren't familiar with the brand new 1060, you can check out this video that we did on right up here. It's basically a 1080 that is now a 1060. It had to be binned down. So they gave it GDDR5X and it was also using the same core as a 1080. It appears that they are also doing that for the 1070, which means that Nvidia either has a heck, a heck and heck ton, a lot of 1080s that they never were able to sell and they have to bin down, or they had an unreasonably high amount of GDDR5X memory just lying around, and so they have to turn it into a brand new graphics card that has GDDR5X memory on it, or basically, no, like there's there's no good explanation for this besides Nvidia overplaced orders. It seems really peculiar that a company, after they've already released the successor to a card, would then update it, give it no performance increase, and just be like, here's a new thing. So this is coming from uh, Zotac, it has officially launched the card on their website. You can see that it does indeed have GDDR5X memory. But again, this is one of the reasons why we're saying that the 20 series was priced so gosh dang high is because Nvidia actually has to sell out of the 10 series. They had millions of these cards just lying there, not being able to be sold because mining has died. They are in a panic. They're in a frenzy trying to sell it, but they also wanted to give the customers something new while at the same time screwing them over with price. And then like it, this is a whole mess. Nvidia is showing us that they really bet wrongly on mining. I covered this in another video where I discussed why Nvidia doesn't actually want you to buy the 20 series. You check it out right up there. They instead want you to buy the 10 series. That's what they're trying to sell. And there was a report that came out a little bit earlier saying that with the 1060 sales and how much they have left of that, we might not even have the GTX 2060, RTX 2060, whatever they're gonna call it, until sometime around June of 2019, which which is a massive delay in between the initial launch and the secondary launch that like the mid-tier is just gonna go nowhere, which is another reason why I was excited for the leaks of the new AMD Navi cards, which I covered in the previous hot news. Again, check it out right up there, where we discussed that in, in AMD might actually release something that costs $250 and performs on the level of an RTX 2070 without ray tracing, of course, and that is going to be phenomenal. We obviously don't, it's just a leak at this point and a rumor, so I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed, but I'm excited. Nvidia seems to be a chicken with their head cut off right now when it comes to the 10 series, and AMD has nothing in the GPU space. They've highly disappointed me before, and I'm not necessarily expecting them to come through now, but a boy can hope. 
But let's stop talking about companies that aren't innovating and let's move on to one that actually is, which happens to be Qualcomm because they had a announcement session going on in the past few days where they unveiled their brand new Snapdragon 8CX Windows processor for more portable form factor laptop. This is what Qualcomm is saying is gonna be the first seven nanometer chip for a PC platform, which obviously AMD has already released those for Epic, but those are only on server ends. But it seems like if Qualcomm actually puts these in things like Thin and Lights or Ultra Books, then they're gonna have the first seven nanometer chips out there. So what, what they're quoting, obviously this is not out in the open market right now, is that with seven watts of performance, they are doubling the performance of the seven watt MacBook Air. And then they are also tying with the 15 watt U series processors from Intel right now at half the performance or half the power draw rather, not performance. It's the same performance, half the power draw. So seven nanometers bringing massive power savings, only a seven watt chip that is comparable to most things that are out on the market right now, doubly beating the MacBook Air. And that is gonna be a great thing when it comes to battery life. It's gonna be a great thing when it comes to actually giving us uh, usable thin and lights. However, one of the issues that we can still bring up is the fact that this is still based on ARM and not x86. So it's not gonna run with all programs. This is gonna be more like a, a uh, web browsing machine, word processing machine, something that you take with you to Starbucks when you're just trying to knock out a few pages on a book, something like that, not necessarily something for content creation, although there will be uh, the Photoshop app that's being updated for ARM. We'll see if that actually comes to Windows ARM. That'd be cool. Anyways, this is exciting. Qualcomm releasing some dope new tech, and I think it's something that's indicating what we can expect for the future, and also happens to make those AMD leaks we got a few days ago a little bit more credible seeing how good seven nanometers in a CPU actually is. And then I wanna talk about a really cool update to the Apple Watch Series 4, which is something that Apple did bring out in their uh, keynote when they talked about their new devices. And this is, this is something that's actually legitimately useful and not just another, oh, Mac expensive product. So the, the Apple Watch Series 4 was certified by the FDA to take ECG readings, and now it has finally been updated to do just that. So you're able to take ECG ratings with the brand new Apple Watch, which is not necessarily great for everybody, but for those who actually do need to keep a check on their heart and keep a check on their heart rate and how it's actually performing, whether there are any sort of arrhythmias are coming up, this is a game changer for those patients who actually need some actual constant monitoring. And now they can do it in a nice sleek watch that might be a little overpriced, but does have a feature that I haven't seen in any other wearable that like any other tech wearable before, which kudos to Apple for doing that at the very least. And then let's talk about what is obviously going to be a more common occurrence and basically the future of humanity. 24 Amazon workers were sent to the hospital after one of the robots in the Amazon warehouse accidentally unleashed bear spray on them. Yeah, AI is not gonna be friendly folks. This is just when they're being ignorant. Imagine what they're gonna do when they're malicious. I, like, this is not a future I want to live in. Gosh dang. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for hot news today. Let me know what you think of the new 1070. Let me know what you think of the bear spray. Let me know what you think of anything and everything we talked about down in the comments down below. Don't forget the like button if you enjoyed this video and that this video was brought to you by the GGWP desk. Be sure to check it out at the link in the video description. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again tomorrow because we actually have a weekend edition of hot news coming out. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Cheers. Love you too.